Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. How Megan and Harry hit the jackpot with their new Montecito home. Why is Megan and Harry's new home worth so much more money than when they bought it in 2020? And why is the couple thinking of moving already? Prince Harry and Meghan Markle packed their bags and headed to California. After stepping down as senior members of the royal family in early 2020, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex eventually settled in Montecito, a quiet community in Santa Barbara. The pair are said to enjoy living in the upscale community. With a source telling Vogue, Harry loves California, but they were both drawn to the smaller town of Santa Barbara where they can integrate into the community while having some distance and privacy that is hard to come by in the Los Angeles area. The Sussex's home features nine bedrooms, 16 bathrooms, a private playground, library, office, spa, cinema room, arcade room, wine cellar, and a large five-car garage. The royals also have some very famous neighbors, including a lister such as Oprah Winfrey, Ariana Grande, Gwyneth Paltrow, Rob Lowe, and Ellen DeGeneres. Everybody leaves you alone. You can live a normal life there. Harry and Meghan's home may be worth more now than when they purchased it in 2020. While the couple bought their mansion in 2020, they may already be seeing the fruits of their investment. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex were said to have paid about $14.7 million for the Santa Barbara home, which features seven acres of property, including a swimming pool and personal gym. However, since the Sussexes invested in the house, home prices in the Montecito community have skyrocketed by up to 43%. However, when speaking to Newsweek, Danielle Hale, the chief economist at Realtor.com, says that the growth may slow down in 2022. This means that if rumors Meghan are looking to sell their mansion are true, they may want to start the process as soon as possible. In addition, if the Sussexes want to upgrade their home, but stay in the same general area, they may be looking to pay a higher price for any new properties. Harry and Meghan's home has been the setting for happy memories. Even though Meghan and Harry have ultimately decided that this stunning Montecito home isn't the right one for them, that doesn't mean they didn't accumulate happy memories in the few years they were there. In particular, they experienced Archie's first few years in that home, as well as the birth of their daughter, Lily Bet. According to OK! Magazine, Meghan and Harry's lives are incredibly different. Now that they're living in California, rather than the United Kingdom. As a source told the publication, Instead of a castle, they live in a mansion in Montecito overlooking the Pacific Ocean, and it has a cool playhouse in their garden, and Archie loves running around the lawn with the dogs. He's at the age where he can't keep still. And although Meghan and Harry are mega-famous in Montecito, they're pretty average compared to many of their neighbors, which means they fit in well amongst them. As a source told OK! Magazine, Meghan and Harry include Archie and Lily in all of their socializing so they have a few famous friends of their own. They've had playdates with Katy Perry and Orlando Bloom's 16-month-old, Daisy, and David Foster and Katherine McPhee's baby boy, Rennie as well. That being said, Meghan and Harry still want to make sure that their children grow up grounded. With the source explaining, they will make sure Archie and Lily get a diverse education and want them to be able to express what's on their mind. Experts report the couple plans to stay put in Montecito. Although, Harry and Meghan are reportedly not happy with the specific house they purchased or its location, they reportedly have plans to stay in the general Montecito area. As a source told the Daily Mail, they want to stay in the neighborhood or nearby. So while this specific property, which was named the Shadow of River Rock by its previous owner, isn't right for them, clearly they chose right when it came to the location. Part of the reasoning behind relocating to Montecito was because Prince Harry reportedly hated the stint they spent living in Los Angeles. After their exit from the royal family, the pair wanted to give La the shot, but ultimately found it wasn't the right fit. According to an Us Weekly source, the timing was so wrong amid the coronavirus pandemic, and they lacked privacy. According to Us Weekly, Meghan has always had a soft spot for the area with a source revealing 
Megan visited Montecito in her teens and fell in love with the picturesque scenery and stunning architecture. So it made sense for Harry and Megan to set their sights on Montecito next, as it has the best of both worlds. Quick disclaimer, everything in this video and all of my videos are my opinion based on detailed research that I perform. That said, I would recommend doing your own research before you make up your mind. Thank you. Royals who lost their fortune. Being born into a royal family means you're set for life, doesn't it? Well, not always. Every once in a while, someone who is born into royalty can find themselves considerably less wealthy, deposed from power altogether, or, in the worst case, on the wrong end of a guillotine. So what's it like to go from being one of the most powerful people in the world with the coffers of a country at your disposal to having considerably fewer resources? There are a few examples, ranging from centuries ago to today, that illustrate the experience. These are some of the royals who lost their fortune. Keep watching for a slice of history. Princess Mako of Japan Sometimes, royals can be happy to lose their fortunes. Take Japan's former Princess Mako Komiro, for example. Japanese law states that if a female member of the imperial family marries a commoner, she has to relinquish her royal status. So, when Princess Mako finally married her longtime commoner boyfriend, Kei Komiro, she had to give up her position for good which she seems fine with to be honest. During a press conference at the time, Mako said, I am very sorry for the inconvenience caused, and I am grateful for those who have continued to support me. For me, K is irreplaceable, marriage was a necessary choice for us. To me, he is irreplaceable. Our marriage is a necessary step for us to be able to protect our hearts in a cherishing way. She even rejected the payout that Japanese royals are given when they formally leave the family. The payment, a cool $1.23 million, would have been funded by taxpayers, which is part of the reason Mako turned it down. She and her new husband also paid for a press conference venue themselves and got married at a registry office. They later moved into a condo in New York, where Kay works as a law clerk. King Edward VIII of the United Kingdom Fans of the Netflix series The Crown may be familiar with one of the British royal family's most scandalous members, King Edward VIII. In 1936, Edward abdicated the throne and gave up the life of luxury that came with it in order to be with his divorced American girlfriend, Wally Simpson. As a consequence of his resignation, Edward lost his royal highness status and was given the lower title of Duke of Windsor, he and Simpson subsequently moved to France, having essentially been exiled from the United Kingdom. Not only did Edward require permission from his brother, the new king, to return, but there was a real chance that coming back might have sparked civil unrest in the country. Edward spent most of the rest of his days unemployed and living in a rented house in France, even though he deeply desired a government job in England. His return to his homeland was further stymied when he decided to flirt with Nazism which, for obvious reasons, was highly frowned upon at the time. As it turns out, money was one of Edward's primary concerns when he abdicated the throne. In order to receive a greater payout from his brother, he appears to have vastly undervalued his assets, claiming that they were worth around $121,000, when his fortune was actually more than $1.4 million. Edward's ruse helped him score annual payments of what amounts to $1 million today, and he was also paid the modern equivalent of $10 million for his tell-all memoir. Prince Harry Okay, it's not like Prince Harry lost his entire fortune when he and Meghan Markle decided to step down from their official royal duties. It's actually pretty obvious that they're still living pretty well out in California. But in the couple's famous interview with Oprah Winfrey, Harry did say that leaving the royal family also meant he was cut off from their fortune. Well, we, didn't we have, have a plan. plan. That, was, that was suggested by somebody else by the, by the point of where my family literally cut me off financially and I had to afford, afford security for, for us. Meghan and Harry also severed their ties to the Queen's Sovereign Grant, which is the fund that pays for travel, maintenance, security, and other expenses associated with the royal lifestyle. The $3.2 million in renovations the couple made to Frogmore Cottage was originally paid for out of the Sovereign Grant, which is taxpayer-funded. Meghan and Harry paid back the cost of the renovations themselves after stepping down as senior royals. 
living in their new mansion in Los Angeles is also a big bank account drain. The Daily Mail estimates their yearly expenses to be around $4.4 million. But it's not like they're paupers. Harry mentioned in the Oprah interview that he still had his inheritance from his late mother, Princess Diana, which amounts to a total sum of $10 million. Not to mention the fact that the pair has been busy signing deals with the likes of Netflix and Spotify while embarking on several other business pursuits. Plus, Meghan still has the money she earned while she was working as an actor before marrying Harry. All in all, things could be worse. The British royal family. Prince Harry isn't the only member of the British royal family who has suffered a financial blow, however. In September 2020, CNBC reported that the British royal family was looking at a loss of almost $45 million thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic. Did this mean the British royals had to start downsizing? Well, not exactly. Plan renovations of Buckingham Palace were scaled back, while it seemed that the royals' purses would remain mostly intact for the time being. Michael Stevens, the so-called keeper of the privy purse, said at the time. In responding to these challenges, We have no intention of asking for extra funding, but we'll look to manage the impact through our own efforts and efficiencies. During the pandemic, the cost of living like a queen, prince, duchess, and so on was also on the rise. According to Wales Online, the royals' costs reached $118 million for 2020 to 2021, a $24 million increase from the previous year. But these costs are really passed on to taxpayers, who reportedly paid $1.66 per person to keep supporting the royal family in 2020. It probably won't make them feel better to know that Queen Elizabeth II's net worth reportedly increased by almost over $20 million from 2020 to 2021, leaving her with a net worth of around $492 million. Stop. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more LMT videos about the royal family are coming soon. Subscribe to LMT channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.